Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation, The Power of BricsCAD, Modern CAD Performance. I'm Don, with me, my colleagues, Julie and Robert, who will be on stage today. Also in the background, but still very busy answering your questions, Anna Maria and Heidi. Uh, let's get started. Today, we'll talk about what is BricsCAD, and why artificial intelligence or machine learning is, is a good choice um, as a series of user assistance tools in a CAD package. Julie and Robert will work together to deliver a demo on a series of the more advanced 3D AI features in BricsCAD. And then Robert will bring it home talking about the power and the value proposition of BricsCAD. So let's get started. First off, who is Brixis? We're a global provider of affordable, modern CAD, BIM, MCAD, and common data environment products. These are brought to market under the BricsCAD and the Brixis 24-7 brands. We're a part of Hexagon AB, a $20 billion publicly traded technology group. Brixis has been in business for almost 20 years. There are Brixis product users in over 110 countries. Uh, the company is headquartered in Ghent, Belgium, with 200 plus employees spread out across eight countries around the world. So the next question, of course, what is BricsCAD? BricsCAD is a family of CAD products. The cost-effective alternatives to the popular CAD and LTCAD, BIM and mechanical design products that you use today. Let's talk about the product family. Imagine 2D, 3D, BIM and mechanical in a single product, one that we call BricsCAD Ultimate. The 30-day free trial of BricsCAD is the BricsCAD Ultimate installer. When you download and try BricsCAD for free, you're getting all the products in a single package. When you decide to buy BricsCAD, of course, your license code will enable the addition that you purchase. Download BricsCAD once and you're basically ready to go. You can convert your trial to a production license by simply entering the license key. And everything in the BricsCAD family connects to Brixis 24-7, our cloud-based collaboration and data storage environment. Now, when you talk about the reasons for BricsCAD, the first one, of course, is affordability. And I'll go into detail with my next slide. But also very important is that BricsCAD is highly user interface and user experience compatible with Autodesk's AutoCAD. That makes it eminently learnable. If you know AutoCAD today, you already know how to use BricsCAD. We'll also talk about license types. Many of our competitors have abandoned various license types that our customers find are still very important to their business. We'll talk about that flexibility that BricsCAD brings to you as a customer when you choose the type of license that you want to buy. And after the demonstration, Robert will tell you a lot more about how easy it is to deploy and manage BricsCAD in your organization. Let's take a look at a comparison of a BricsCAD Pro license against an AutoCAD subscription. So let's talk about affordability, build it out. The cost of a BricsCAD professional, BricsCAD Pro perpetual license, $850 at manufacturer's suggested retail. So that's the normal price of BricsCAD with $255 a year for software maintenance. Now, let's take a look at what happens if you choose to subscribe, which is also an option that we offer at Brixis. We know that many of our customers want the security of perpetual licenses. Others want the business aspects of a subscription, and we offer both. Now, let's take a look at AutoCAD subscription for three years at Autodesk's suggested retail price. 1690 a year. So let's talk about what we can summarize from this slide. First, you can buy a BricsCAD perpetual license for less than one year of the cost of AutoCAD. Next, 
BricsCAD maintenance is about 15% the cost of a year of AutoCAD. And when you're on maintenance, you have the latest major release, access to Brix's 24 seven and priority product support. And finally, over three years, that BricsCAD perpetual license on maintenance costs less than a year of AutoCAD. Pretty amazing, huh? And there's more than that. We'd like to say your license is your way, your choice. One license for planet Earth. What do we mean by that? Well, first, perpetual and network multi-user licenses live on at Brixis because our customers tell us that these are important licensing options for them. Of course, if you want to subscribe, we make it easy and affordable. A single BricsCAD license supports any language in any location on the planet. You don't need to ask our permission to use your BricsCAD license in a different country. And we won't charge you extra for that privilege either. Finally, network, multi-user, and volume licenses round out our offerings. What it's really all about is you. We're here because of you, and our license offerings reflect the customer-centric nature of Brixis. Now, I talked a little bit about compatibility. I want to go a little bit deeper. This idea of a familiar UI, that is, all of the elements in the user interface are in the general same locations. They look the same, they feel the same, and the experience, the ability to use all of your existing support files, your menus, your list routines, macros, plotter configurations, line types, patterns, uh, and of course, your drawing files, which open and save natively in BricsCAD. So again, if you uh, are a current AutoCAD user, Robert has had a lot of success doing lunch and learn sessions where people come in, spend an hour, get some pizza, and still can go back to their desk after lunch and start using BricsCAD immediately. That compatibility is what makes BricsCAD the obvious choice for all customers that are using AutoCAD today. But wait, there's more. I want to talk for just a minute about the case for artificial intelligence and machine learning in CAD. You know, it's really an overhyped term to some extent. But when you include this concept of machine learning, the options for CAD users get really, really interesting. When you think about this concept of an intelligent collaboration between a designer and a computer, what does the designer do well? Well, she's great at identifying design goals, developing prototypes. Humans are wonderful at making style and aesthetic choices. And of course, humans are pack animals, so we work together. We like to share and build constructive feedback for teams. We like to ideate and create new concepts or innovate and improve existing ideas. These are all free thinking concepts that humans are great at. What does the machine do well? Well, first off, it manages repetitive tasks perfectly. Computers don't care if it has to do the task once or a million times. Computers are very good at creating derivatives from existing content. So for example, if I build a 3D BIM model with very high level of detail, I can ask the computer to automatically create design documentation for me and keep it in sync with the model. Now, another thing that computers can do when machine learning is applied is something we call experience-based recommendations or style as an inspiration. Based on the tasks that you perform on a regular basis and the standards that you use day over day, the machine can learn these and it can start to make suggestions that help you stay on track, help you stay inside of your corporate standards and help you maintain um, standards uh, around a discipline or standards around a locale or a country. Now, computers are also exceptionally good at the management of complex things. Uh, that's exactly what they do well, managing many, many tasks simultaneously with many interconnections. Things that befuddle humans are great for computers to do. And finally, this concept of verifying design goals another analysis function that computers are really, really great at. So if we merge these two, we can see that there is a large amount of overlap in that Venn diagram where humans and machines can work together to make things better and make work 
easier, faster, and more accurate. Now, there are two options as we see it today. Option one, something that we call artificial creativity. Now, in the industry, it's called the generative design. But the idea is that you supply the design constraints and you send the machine on the task and it establishes the goal. Now, when you look at these, they're very organic because organic shapes are very foundational. They're strong, they're light, and uh, they're, fle they're flexible where they need to be and rigid where they need to be. So organic design is a wonderful thing. It's worked for nature, of course. But if you think about it, these shapes are really hard to manufacture today. Also, we don't necessarily have the ability to radically change the design of buildings and mechanical components today. This is really cool stuff, and it's going to be really pertinent in the future. But today, we really want to focus on design and what, what can we do to make today's designs more fluid? Our solution is something we call BricsCAD Intelligent Design Assistance. This concept of simplifying, automating, and optimize. Imagine a world where the computer does what you ask it to do. Uh, imagine a world where you can design and let the computer do the detail work. Imagine a world where this concept of Brixis Intelligent Design Assistance can help you be more effective at what you do. And two of the tools that you're going to see in the demonstration are Bimify and Propagate. These open the door to intelligent design assistance. So without much more from me, I would like to hand the stage over to my colleagues, Julie Kavarian and Robert Green. They're going to take you into a demonstration of the BricsCAD Ultimate product family and we're gonna focus on a series of features and functions that are a part of BricsCAD BIM. With that, my friends, let me switch the presenter over. It's all yours. Okay, thank you, Don. And uh, hello, Robert. Hello, good evening. Or good evening, yes. Okay, so with that, let's just kind of jump in here. Now, as Don said, BricsCAD's familiar. So doesn't this look familiar? And for those of you that like to use toolbars, well, we've got toolbars. We got lots of toolbars. And again, they should be very familiar. And we have a status bar and we have a command line. So all the components are there. It's familiar, it's comfortable. But we also have unique AI machine learning tools. So you really, you get the best of both worlds. So for those of you that are familiar with other BIM programs, you know how you, you pick a family, you start to draw, whether that's a slab or a wall. So you just kind of need to know what you're drawing. And sometimes that works. But what if you could start a sketch in 3D that was CAD accurate? And Julie, what is she's doing right now is she's actually using the AI assisted quick draw command where she can very easily and with sketch like simplicity just start building a dimensionally accurate building shell, which is going to be saved in DWG, by the way. It's very, very easy for her to manipulate this to copy multiple floors. She can start working now on the top floor and make this design totally different than the floors that were underneath it. So as you can see, very flexible, very powerful, and very precise. And what's happening as we go along here, there's actually some things going on in the background that Julie will show you. Uh, right now, she's going to go ahead and put in some features here like a parametrically controlled window, for example. Uh, she can select window styles. And basically what she's been able to do here, uh, faster than I can talk about it, is to start creating a BIM model. And you really didn't have to know any BIM to do that. Right, Julie? Absolutely, absolutely. So this is one way to create a BIM model in BrooksCAD, but let me show you another way. So here I've got an office building. It's been modeled in 3D solids as a DWG. Um, the way we did it, it started life as a box, we pushed and pulled some faces, we sliced it, we shelled it, we unioned it, did a couple of blocks here for windows, and basically we've got 3D solids. We've got 64 of them. It's also a CAD accurate massing model. 
But there's not a lot of information in here, and specifically, there's not a lot of BIM information. So how do we go from this 3D solid model to a BIM classified model? Well, it's actually, it's pretty easy because I just need to select a solid and classify it however I want. In this case, a roof. So now I have a roof. And we can see over here, I've got my roof as a building element and I'm down to 63 solids. So one down, 63 to go. Now I could continue to do this for every solid in the model, but that's tedious and takes time. And as, as Don said, Humans aren't good at that tedious thing, those tedious things. So instead, um, I'm going to use our BIMify command. Now, pay attention here. Don't blink because it's fast. Uh, BIMish, BIMify, as he said, was machine learning tool. And it's going to basically go through and analyze my model. And very quickly, like that quickly, has gone in and now assigned all of these building elements. It also creates my initial sections and elevations for me. So very quick, um, how long would that take to do manually or how long would this take you to do in your current CAD program? Yeah, well, it would take me a while, that's for sure. Uh, what, I, what I think is really neat about this is that the AI power here is not only classifying and, and categorizing everything as it should without me having to know how to do that actually, um, it's doing it extremely quick and it's elevating the level of detail in this model uh, from something that has essentially no smarts whatsoever to something that's fully BIM classified. And it's doing it with AI learning techniques. For example, if something's vertical, it must be a wall of some sort. Um, and if it's horizontal, it must either be a roof or a slab of some sort. So uh, I was able to get very quickly from something with no smarts to something that is extremely smart. Um, faster than I could even talk about it. And I still don't have to know BIM to do it. <laughs> true, true. So our model's been classified, but what's next? Well, we can see here, yes, we've got walls, but they're generic walls. So that means that there's no specific uh, material information, if you will. So what we can do here is just drag and drop materials. And a material or a composition here is just a group of materials. So it's very easy to do. I'm just going to start and do this top floor. I can drag and drop. I can make selections over here. And we're going to use this as a template because I don't want to do this for the entire model. Now I can manipulate these uh, compositions. I can also come in and change properties on this window. I want to make this a little bit deeper. And I think we're almost done. I just have the roof to do. So let's do that. So here's my template. It was easy to do, but again, it's tedious. So we're going to use another AI tool called AutoMatch. And AutoMatch is going to go through and basically look at what I set up and analyze the model and apply those similar thing, those, those uh, compositions to the rest of the model for me. So again, very quick, very easy, um, a lot faster than if I had to do it manually. Now I'm gonna quick, quickly save this, do a quick file save as here, because I wanna use this setup, these compositions, these kind of rules, if you will, in another building. So here I have a second building in my project. It's already been BIMified, but this time when I run AutoMatch, I'm going to use that external file to pull over those compositions. Oh, don't worry about that. It's just a notification. Um, pull over those materials into this file, into this model. So again, it's quicker than I could do it. And it's also helping with um, maintaining my standards. It's letting the software do the heavy lifting and it is maintaining that consistent level of detail throughout the model too. Yeah, and, and you know, from, from my CAD management background, what's really fantastic about this is that it is automatically enforcing standards and I, I don't even really know that I'm doing it. And uh, my feeling is the best standard you can ever use is one that's so simple that you'll want to use it. So we, 
as we as we move through this process, it was extremely easy to take buildings with with essentially zero intelligence, bimify them, and get them up to the point where the intelligence is there, and then we can take those rules and easily apply it uh, to other buildings that are in our project space. So real smart, real standard, uh, great workflows and time savings there. Absolutely. So what's next? We've bimified, we've automatched, we've got some compositions in there. And here we can see what's happening between the roof and this wall. And it's, it's a great start, but it's not all the details that I need. So what I actually need to do is I need to pull this uh, roof slab over into the wall, right? Um, there's a couple other plies I wanna work with. I also probably need to extrude this up so I actually have a, a cap on my roof. So let me jump ahead here. Here's the finished conditions of what I want. So you can see I've made a few more changes to those plies. Um, and I know that this situation is going to happen in other areas of the model and other areas of that main building as well. I don't want to have to go through and do all of that manually. So I'm going to go ahead and create a detail out of this. And that way and that, I can use it again. And that's just, it, it's another perfect illustration of in, in other BIM tools that I've tried to use, you could... Uh, clean up details and then you would have to go all around the model and just continue to clean and continue to clean and continue to clean. So here what you're going to be able to do um, is build a detail and then you're going to be able to take advantage of that and move it around the rest of the building using some AI tools um, like Propagate, which Julie is going to show you. So we're just wrapping up this detail here. I could actually even add some tags. It adds some tags automatically, but I can add them my own. And now we've got our detail. And here's the detail I just created. Now, if any of you were on the, on the webinar last week, you might remember that we had a 2D profile of a gear. We extruded it. We automatically parametrized it in one click. Well, we can do the same thing here on the detail by just parametrizing it with one click. Oops, didn't like that one. Well, let's go over here. Um, we can show you what that looks like. I think I had too many things open there. Um, so here is what it does. It basically parametrizes and constrains the model for me. And last week we were working in the parameters and constraints. This week we can look in the mechanical browser because I'm running BricsCAD Ultimate, which means I have access to both the BIM and the um, mechanical workflows. And we can just see what's going on by clicking in here. And here's the thickness of the roof. We can also look at this detail here, the wall, uh, the wall that we made some changes. When I first parametrized this, um, BricsCAD did a great job at giving me that head start, so I didn't have to manually come in and do all this. But there were a couple things that were not quite right, so I actually had to come in and add a distance parameter here to maintain the 50 millimeter for the cap. And I added a coincident for these two faces of uh, the side of the, of the insulation and the wall ca cap, and another distance parameter for that insulation. So it was very quick, very easy to do. And once I've done that, now we can go into my model here and we can use that detail. So I can click propagate from here or I can just go in and drag and drop this. It's looking at my model, finding out all the areas where that model could apply and it gives me the option of ac accessing, accepting or deleting any or all of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, let's go ahead and take them all. And now we can see we've got that roof cap on both wings of my building. So I didn't have to do draw it manually. I just let the AI tools take over for me. You know, th this is a, a great and powerful illustration of how this works. But uh, Julie, I have to tell you, one of the, as an engineer, one of the questions I get is, well, that's really great, but does that only work in BIM? And uh, of course the answer is no, no, it, it, it works all over the place. So what we thought might be educational would be to show you some of these techniques like parametrize and, and propagate and some of this intelligent AI driven productivity features um, in a context that's 
not BIM, uh, just so that you can see for yourself how that would work. So we're going to use the uh, some mechanical context here where we can show off a little bit of uh, automatically building and using shapes uh, along guidelines, propagate some detail element building, and uh, Julie's gonna do this here with some trusses. So take it away, Julie. Thank you, Robert. So we've got the beginnings of a structural grid as well as a sketch of a truss. And that's what we're gonna focus on here. And the way that the sketch was written, was, was created was just, it's lines, just line command. We actually divided it up, had some points so we could draw the remaining, um, the remaining webs in there. So it was easy, it was familiar. So how do we get from this simple line sketch though into profiles? Well, we happen to have a whole library of profiles and uh, we can just very simply drag and drop some things on them. Now, I said that that was made up of lines. My sketch was made up of lines and we can see that here. Now I've started to use those lines. So I'm just gonna get rid of the other ones. And then that will allow me to finish this up. So again, Bricks, BricsCAD has given me a great start. We can see now we've what we've got classified, we've got a beam and 22 members. But actually, I want both of these top members to be beams. So I can just come in and reclassify them as a beam, and now they're, now they're beams. Now they're beams, I've got three beams. So we can also see that we've got a little bit more work to do because we need to clean up the connection between those two beams and I can do that easily as well. Now in the interest of time I'm going to pop over to another drawing where we've gone ahead and cleaned up all of the connections. We've cleaned up the connections on the side, both sides. We've propagated this truss through the rest of my grid. We've even added some cross bracing on the sides. And really now the only thing left to do is to work on the connection right here between uh, this column and this beam. So let's go ahead and do that. And how are we gonna do that? Well, the way we're gonna do that, again, is very familiar. We're gonna use some standard tools. Let's get that situated. Um, we're just going to use familiar modeling tools. So, for example, well, let me check my snaps here. Make sure I got the right snaps. Yes, I do. And we'll start just with a box. Give it a little thickness. Come over here, again, use my, my modeling tools. Here, we're just gonna push pull, do the same thing on the other side, because basically we're creating a plate that's gonna be bolted. So here's my plate. So now I need to put some bolts in. And to do that, we'll go to our components menu. And again, because I'm using BricsCAD Ultimate, I have access to the BricsCAD me uh, mechanical library of standard parts. So I can go in and find the bolt that I need. And watch that as that just kind of snaps into place on the bolt. I can place it. And now I've got one bolt. Now I happen to know that I need six bolts. So how am I gonna do that? Well, there's a couple ways that I can do that. Um, I could copy it, I could array it, but again, I'm going to use propagate because it's so much faster and it's kind of fun. Here, it's going to give me some more options. It's analyzing what I could do. It could do a similar location, but I know I need six, three on each side. So I need, I need a, uh, a grid here. So we'll go ahead and add that grid. Whoops, there you go. So you can see three on each side. Um, Looks great. Yeah. You know, what, what 
strikes me here as you know, longtime CAD user is that I was able in in this particular example you just did, I I was able to use object snaps. I was able to lock onto geometry. I was able to use simple thicknesses. Um, I've been able to create elements here using things that I already know, but I can then use some real powerful capabilities where I can turn this thing into a standard component, uh, which will allow me to put it in my project standards so that everybody else can use this and nobody has to recreate the wheel. And there's gonna be some other benefits, which Julie's gonna show us. You can see little hints of it punching through the support column there. Um, th this ability to use what you already know and extend what you already know with AI-driven power is what's really unique here. And this is something that you just couldn't do in the other guy's system, right? Absolutely. So the reason, one of the reasons I want to create a component and creating components very similar to creating a detail um, is that I wanna address the holes that we have to punch through to the column. So the component allows me to do that um, so if we just hide this, we can now see that I've got the holes in my column. So the other thing that Robert mentioned was this is a mechanical component. So we can zoom in and see that here. It is an actual com mechanical component because maybe this needs to go out to manufacturing. So we can do that as well. Now, a component is kind of like a smart block. Um, you know, basically, because that's allowing us to create those holes. And the last step that I need to do here is just to, again, propagate that plate through the rest of my structure here. And again, I could do a copy, I could do a copy repeated, I could do an array, but BrooksCAD goes through and takes all that drudgery for me and shows me where it might be applicable and I can just go ahead and accept it. And we can see now that we've got that component throughout. We can also see it over on this side. We'll see the back because it will have the bolts sticking out. Whoops, there we go. And there's the component as well. So this was just a quick introduction to some of the AI and machine learning tools in BricsCAD Ultimate. We saw Bimify, AutoMatch, propagate and parameterize. Okay, Don, back to you. Oh, you caught me off guard. I was <laughs> taking a drink when you did that. I'm <laughs> gonna switch the presenter over to Mr. Green. And by the way, it was solely water, guys. We're not we're not doing any alcohol here tonight. Um, switching over to Robert so that he can uh, uh, finish uh, up with his compatibility and power presentation. Very good, thanks Don and thanks Julie, that was an awesome demo. I enjoyed working it with you. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody for attending uh, this evening or this afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, we hope you like the power and flexibility that you've seen in BricsCAD so far and what AI can do for you. Um, but let's expand a little bit more on, on some of the other values and there, there's really two different sections here that I wanna talk about, which is compatibility with existing solutions uh, so that it's easy for you to adopt BricsCAD today. And then the AI-driven power that we've had a hint of in the demo uh, just now, so that you can continue along with BricsCAD and gain much more power and functionality as time goes by. So you can get BricsCAD now for its compatibility, but you can stay with BricsCAD for the power and the enhanced time savings. So as our director of implementation, it's uh, it's my job to oversee the implementation of BricsCAD for companies who may want to adopt it. So let's go ahead and, and have a little bit of a look at how that might occur and why BricsCAD's the right solution for you. The first thing really has to do with compatibility. And when we talk about compatibility, really let's start at the beginning. Let's talk about the files themselves. Uh, BricsCAD is based on open data formats, not proprietary traps, uh, we feel like it's your data. That means that your data should be stored in industry standard file formats that you can always access. Therefore, BricsCAD is native DWG. We don't convert to DWG. We don't import DWG. We simply open and save it. And it, you saw several places in, in Julie's demo where she did just that. So you can take the DWG files you have today, 
go into BricsCAD five minutes from now and you'll be using exactly the same files. Well, what about BIM though? Because there was a lot of additional data that was being categorized there through BIMify and AutoMatch and some of the other tools that she used. Well, we store everything inside our DWG file, but we store it in IFC standard format. Now, some of you may be familiar with Building Smart and their IFC or industry foundation classes. That is the data schema we use. So everything inside BricsCAD is stored in IFC format. Therefore, we don't translate to IFC. We don't translate IFC inbound. We are IFC. So for open BIM and open drawings, BricsCAD has it open. No proprietary data traps for you to fall into. It's your data after all, so it should be easy for you to access it. Now, another aspect of compatibility has to do with customization. If you've been using AutoCAD for a long time, chances are you've customized it. Uh, I, I really can't think of any large company I've ever been in that uses it straight vanilla out of the box. So what kind of customization have you built? And will you be able to bring that customization over into BricsCAD easily? And the answer to that is yes. We understand that your CUI files, your tool palettes, your Autolisp utilities, your sheet sets, your templates, your plotter configurations, your page setups, all of these things are tuned to your users and your standards and your processes. So this customization is crucial for you. And that's why we make it simple for you to read your CUI files in, for you to bring your tool palettes in, for you to run Autolisp files directly for you to open sheet sets, save out templates, and you can even drag and drop your plotter configurations right into the BricsCAD folder, and you can start plotting five minutes from now just exactly the same way you always have. So this compatibility really is crucial, and it keeps your implementation time down because you don't have to spend a lot of time importing or manipulating files. You can just take the files you have, bring them to BricsCAD, and get going. Now. Because we're so compatible, we're easily learnable. And here's what I mean by that. Since our command structure is compatible and our interface is highly compatible and we bring over the custom tools, which I just mentioned, this means that everything is as you would expect it. The key ins are as you would expect. The ribbons are where you would want them to be. Pull down menus are consistent. Palettes look the same, drag and drop operations are the same. You even saw Julie using palletized drag and drop for some of the AI tools, for example. This means that your user's muscle memory is also compatible with BricsCAD. They will be able to sit down at BricsCAD and simply start using it. As Don alluded at the top of the presentation, a lot of times I expose people to BricsCAD first, uh, I call them laptop lunch parties. Uh, where, where people come in and they're skeptical. They say, well, what's this BricsCAD thing? And inside of an hour, they're using it. And that's because we're so compatible. Users can get on it and feel at home straight away. But in addition to being learnable, we're extensible and smart. And here's what I mean by that. Some of the AI tools that you just looked at enhance the knowledge that you already have. Everybody intrinsically understands the idea of copying, but how much easier is it to propagate? This means that our AI commands and tools will eliminate the repetitive tasks that your users would otherwise have to drudge their way through. This speeds workflows, it saves clicks, it saves picks, it saves minutes, and this over time delivers a very high return on your investment with BricsCAD. Oh, and by the way, training, how long did it take to train on Propagate or Bimify? It didn't. It ran faster than you could say the word. So you can use these advanced tools in simply minutes. There really is no learning curve. So with our degree of compatibility and learnability, you'll be on BricsCAD straight away. And just to kind of recap, here are some of the AI-driven uh, functions that we looked at. Blockify, Copy Guided, which we covered in our last webinars. And, and yes, you can get to those old webinars. We'll show you how later. Bimify, Propagate, Parametrize, Automatch. Um, and there's more coming all the time uh, with our team in Ghent. So learn BricsCAD 
with compatible compatibility and muscle memory that you already have, and then take it to the next level with AI. One thing that Don talked about uh, at the beginning was this concept of one license for planet Earth. And I'm gonna talk to CAD managers and IT people here just for a moment. Uh, the idea of rolling out a CAD system can sometimes bring fear to a CAD manager or an IT manager. And I want to allay that fear right now because of our flexibility and our easy deployability. Let me explain what I mean. You can have perpetual licenses with maintenance or you can have subscription or you can have both as needed. So you can configure your license pool in the way that makes sense for your business. We're not gonna tell you what makes sense for your business. You know that better than we do. We're simply going to fulfill your need with the types of licenses that make the most sense for you. We're then going to allow you to have all these applications. Everything that you've seen today runs out of a single 408 megabyte installer. The entire BricsCAD family of products is in that one installer. The only thing that changes from product to product is the license code. So you never have to re-download, you never have to rebuild deployments, you never have to go back over and over and over. You only maintain one product file and you deploy it easily. It doesn't matter what language you want to use this in. It doesn't matter what location you sit in. You'll not be charged extra for these extra conveniences. Now, we feel if you buy BricsCAD, you should be able to use it in the way that makes sense for you. And that includes wherever you want to sit on planet Earth and whatever language that may mean. We're network user available. So uh, a lot of the other CAD firms are have either eliminated this or are eliminating it, but we will continue to have shareable network multi-user licenses available. This will run on a single license server. That license server controls perpetual and subscription licenses and allows them to float in a way that makes sense for your business. We support silent install and we're SCCM push friendly uh, with very, very little dependency on admin rights. So BricsCAD is just as easy to push for 100 people as it is to push for two. Uh, it's really straightforward and as a CAD manager myself, I can tell you uh, this is, is just one of the lightest, lowest stress, lowest bandwidth deployment tools uh, I've, I've ever had the pleasure of working with. So here's my question to you. As smart and as powerful and affordable and as AI driven as BricsCAD is, why aren't you already using it? Why not try it for yourself? So what I'm gonna do is hand this back over to Don and he's gonna wrap things up and he's gonna show you exactly how you can go see BricsCAD for yourself. Don. Awesome, awesome. Robert, thank you so much, Julie. That was beautiful. Um, I think that you you did a really spectacular job of of hammering the point home that BricsCAD is familiar yet modern and advanced at the same time, and and that's that's what we've been striving for, and that's what we work for every day to try to make the product as efficient and as modern as possible without taking away the tools that you're familiar with, and that's the way it works. Robert, if you can show me that next slide quickly. Everyone, you have the ability to download the BricsCAD Ultimate Trial for free for 30 days from Brixis.com. Go to the main page, download button at the top. If you don't currently have a Brixis account, we'll ask you to create one. I think there are less than four or six questions. We just want basic information about you so that we can stay in touch with you throughout the trial and ensure that you have the answers that you need to all of your questions. When you get BricsCAD, install it, launch it, and drag a handful of your most complicated drawing files into it and tell us what you think. Um, we think you'll be amazed at some of the functionality and capability of BricsCAD, including multi-threaded performance, taking advantage of today's CPUs, or file loads, section creation, uh, detailed drawing uh, uh, um, uh, regeneration. 
uh, keeping the drawing synchronized with the model, rendering many of the functions of BricsCAD are multi-threaded and use helper threads to leverage today's modern computer hardware. Robert, one more click, if you would, please. I'd like to ask everybody, uh, if you need assistance, please reach out. Try BricsCAD at Brixis.com. That email address goes to a group of us inside the company, and we will do our absolute best to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Uh, we will continue this series every uh, week um, at 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. U.S. Pacific time. Uh, you can register for future events at Brixis.com events. Uh, there are links to the prior recordings there also. Uh, this uh, recording will also be available, and when GoToWebinar is done compiling it, it will send you an email uh, linking back to the webinar so that you can watch it. We will have the registrations for future events uh, at least the next two to three weeks up sometime tomorrow. So we invite everyone to come back. Uh, we will uh, be performing another variation of this demo next Tuesday. Please invite your friends. And then as we move into May, we'll be launching new topics and uh, new ideas about the power of the BricsCAD product family. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. We really appreciate you coming to see what we offer. Uh, please stay safe, take care of your people, be healthy, and uh, try BricsCAD. We're here for you. Thank you very much.